Okay, here we go. Episode 5 of Star Trek Picard. It starts on some planet we've never heard of at a place called the Seven Domes 13 years ago. It seems like every episode in Picard except for the very first one has been starting with flashbacks. The first one started with a dream. But we get right into it and we get each upon an operating table getting his eye ripped out. And man, oh man, I could have done without this. Egypt, you know, Egypt has been called the Wesley Crusher of Voyager. I don't care. He, he was a good little character, and he was important to Seven, and he survived the Delta Quadrant, and he made it back to Federation space. He deserved better than this. He, he just did. And they, they straight up show him getting his eye ripped out, and it, it's a little much. And this woman is just going away at him. No anesthesia, no painkillers, no nothing. She's just torturing him. And she asks him where his cortical node is. And I gotta say, that's a good little bit of continuity calling back to Voyager because each of did give up his cortical node for Seven when her cortical node was failing her because of her experimenting with emotions. And Seven comes in, kills everyone, and comes to Egypt's aid. And here we see Egypt in one of the later but earlier Starfleet uniforms, which thought that was nice that he did make it through the academy that he did eventually join starfleet he was there from the uss coleman um i guess that is a 2384 phaser I, I don't like what the new phasers look like i liked the curved phasers that they had in the tng movies ds9 era i, I much preferred those the ones that were out of continuity for Voyager because they didn't have them with them when they went to the Delta Quadrant and then magically in season two or three they just showed up on the ship. But yeah, that new phaser, it's interesting. Right here I like that they've got Seven's handpiece, they've got her eyepiece, they got Seven down pretty much perfect and I like that. Um, as far as this goes, a lot of people already have been saying that there was no reason for her to shoot him, for her to kill him, that this was a mercy killing, that she was putting him out of his misery, something to that effect. You know, I don't really know. Maybe he was so badly injured she couldn't get him back to a sick bay in time. But it seems like there's somewhere where there's medical equipment. Couldn't she have helped him? He didn't seem like he was dying. Why did she have to kill him there? That... This whole opening just is a whole can of worms, and I, I'm just not sure about this. But she, she mercy kills him, and Egypt dies, and oh boy. And then we see here that these people were uh, harvesting Borg parts, Borg equipment, taking Borg apart. Are Borg no longer threatening? You know... That's one thing I'm noticing here about Picard. You've got the artifact, aka the captured Borg cube. Now you've got people who are harvesting Borg parts and taking Borg apart. Borg can assimilate you. Borg are full of all kinds of technology. They have adapting personal shields. They have nanoprobes inside of them. Borg are dangerous. And they're making them seem like a hunted, wounded prey species here. That makes no sense to me. That Borg are just this thing that people are out trying to collect their technology like this. The Borg should not be getting depicted the way they are, but, you know, I digress. So then two weeks ago, we come here to the dumbest name in all of Star Trek, Bajazzle. Which, that sounds like Vajazzled. Bajazzled. Vajazzled. Like... Like, in the episode of that, oh, it's slipping my mind right now, but there was a college, I think it's called Blue State or something like that. It's about college students, and there's an episode where one of the college students is bejazzling different girls, and bejazzle is just the dumbest name they possibly could have come up with. And she's got this guy, who is a beta nari. He, he can smell lying, and who you've had sex with, and what you've eaten, and you know, I think they just should have had an augmented Nausicaan or something. That would have been a better tie-in than coming up with this guy. 
and that's 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 bedazzled right there bedazzled um her uniform her outfit reminds me of double girls and this being a streaming service and not being for kids anymore i almost expected to see some nudity here but they didn't quite go that far so in this next scene Maddox comes to her and basically says that his lab has been destroyed and that it was the Tal Shiar and he has no idea how he's ever going to pay her back. She's like, damn, dealing with the Tal Shiar is always a pain in the ass. And she offers him some Tranya, which is the drink that the little kid who wasn't a kid was drinking in the Corbinite Maneuver. That's a nice call out. Except it's poisoned. He drops his thing and falls down and he's knocked out. And so now he's her prisoner and she's going to do a deal with the Tal Shiar, yay. And we go here and Picard is studying a holographic ad for Free Cloud, which I still say sounds like a planet from Firefly. And Seven comes and talks to him and she's just wondering what he's doing out here, what's going on. She talks about the Fenris Rangers and how they keep their money on Free Cloud and that's a good place to drop her. And... You know, there's a lot of talk of money in this. Money still exists in Star Trek. It's always going to be a thing. Uh, but, yeah, they should just be talking about gold press latinum instead of money, but I digress. Uh, she does. He does offer her a drink, and she asks for bourbon straight up. And I have to call out Voyager in the 100th episode of Voyager, Timeless, Cynthia Hall did not agree with Seven, and she got drunk real easily. I have to wonder how uh, hard alcohol affects her. I guess in 20 years she's adapted herself to be able to take alcohol, or the writers forgot about that. I don't know. Um, and then we come here, and Rafi is looking up her kid, and she's talking to Rios, and somehow at the end of the last episode when Picard was all seven of nine he somehow forgot who she was even though the cars already said her name and there would have been more than enough time for them to make introductions and he doesn't even know what her name is he's like isn't she 19 17 something's like no she's the borg from the delta quadrant it's like oh the borg ranger you know i forgot the picard was even a borg I don't know how you forget that stuff, and that kind of didn't make sense. He didn't know who Seven of Nine was, because there's a disconnect here between the last episode and this episode. But again, whatever. And then we come here. One interesting thing was he was going to smoke, and she made him not smoke, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me since she smokes, but yeah. So you come here, and Agnes is watching videos of, I guess home movies of her and Maddox and I guess they were a thing and he replicated all of the ingredients to cook his own cookies and she thinks it's weird and asks why didn't he just replicate the cookies and he says he doesn't like the way it tastes somehow I get the feeling that if you replicated the ingredients for the cookies and you cook the cookies yourself it's still gonna taste wrong if you don't have real ingredients so that was interesting I mean she's got a little holographic thing here that she uses to project it i think that's kind of cool instead of having like a whole computer that you need or i don't know you know this little device is cool but i think it would be better if they had pads and the pad could just project a hologram i i think that they use things like this to cut back on props you can tell that this is cheap I, I real, but I really feel like there should just be a Starfleet pad here and those can project holograms. So while I think this thing is cool, I don't think it really fits. And then they get the free cloud and they get assaulted by personalized holograms, which I think it's weird that the planet can just interface with your ship and put holograms on the ship and that everybody gets a hologram that's specifically personalized to them. How is the planet able to scan them, know who's there, get their identity? Is this supposed to be you know, commentary on cookies and personalized ads on the internet and stuff. Like, you come here and you instantly get this. That makes very little sense to me exactly how that works, but they each get a personalized ad. Picard gets one. Agnes gets attacked by a robot, and she has to hit it to turn it off. 
and Rafi gets one trying to sell her drugs and you can see a weed grinder there and weed and a hookah and other stuff yeah see I mean how do they know her personalized preferences to the point that they know that she's a drug addict this doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me and then Legolas, he doesn't get an ad because he apparently doesn't have a personality and they don't know who he is because he's been isolated with the warrior nuns. Which, okay, that's, that's kind of funny. He's like, I don't get one. And then basically they hatch an Ocean Eleven's plan. They figure out who has Maddox and that he's in the hands of a criminal and that it's bad juju. And they have to come up with the whole plan to backdate them in there and come up with identities it's it's a whole thing and seven comes out here and she's like oh we're going after vajazzle huh and she's like well you know they're gonna want me so we'll use me as bait and that's the whole plan and then she says that the Fen fenris rangers have been after her for a very long time and then we go down to canto bite i mean free cloud and Okay, right here, we got Mott's Hair Emporium, and we got Quark Bar. What is yours is ours. Great little Easter eggs, great little call-outs. You even see a little Dabo wheel above Bar. But I still feel like the holograms are too much, and how is there a TNG and DS9 Easter egg in one place? I mean... What are the odds? And it also, it says Quark Bar, not Quarks. So I think that's a franchise. It's not actually Quarks Bar. And then we intercut with them planning the heist while Rios is also going down there. And she they come up with the whole plan. And Agnes has to beam them out. And she's not really okay with this. And then him, he doesn't quite understand that they're going undercover and that they're playing. He seemed kind of dim to me in this episode. That didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Uh, Legolas. I'm completely blanking on his name at the moment. I'm going to call him Legolas. He gets scanned. Rios gets scanned when he goes in there. He lights up a cigar. You know, I've read on the internet that the whole smoking cigar thing is that's part of his cultural uh, heritage. And he does things that are bad habits just to ingrain himself more with his personal cultural heritage i don't know what i think about that but it's whatever and he goes in here and he wants to talk to vup who is the big guy the beta inari who can smell everything and he comes up here and he basically gets in his face and calls him out on his bullshit pulls a gun on him but it turns out they gave him a hypo spray filled with drugs to fool his senses so that the Beta Inari can't really know what's going on, which I feel like if he was drugged up to fool his senses, that he would even be able to smell that. If he can smell lies and what you've had to eat and who you've had sex with, wouldn't he be able to smell that you're drugged up to fool him? But anyway, Rios has a holographic projector, shows him the readout of seven, and he's immediately interested in getting a hold of this Borg, because again, Borg are being hunted, and they're just this... All season on the Borg. The Borg used to be dangerous. This this doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And Picard acts kind of cartoonish when they put him in his outfit. And again, I don't know how they expect to fool anybody with him acting that way. I mean, it even says right there in the subtitles, cartoonish French accent. He's not even attempting to pretend like he's taking this seriously. And they've got little mini handheld transport enhancers. Those are kind of cool. And they put Seven in trick uh, handcuffs so she can get out. And Gerardi is kind of nervous about being the beam out person. But uh, Rafi shuts her down. <laughs> Shut up. And they put another bag over another head. What is with the bags? There must be some better way to cut off somebody's sensor. Some better way for sensory deprivation to work in the almost 25th century than a damn bag. And then he tries to act cartoonish and is all not really pulling it off and is all, I don't know how to be anyone but Elnor. Elnor, that's his name. He's not Legolas. He's Elnor. He's like, I don't know how to be anyone else but Elnor. And they tell him to act like Elnor. And Seven's all, act like an Elnor who talks less. So they go down there and 
Picard is just being a cartoonish Frenchman. It even says cartoonish French accent. And he talks about how she's corrupt, she's been violated, she's damaged goods, and how when you get assimilated as a kid, you can't take all the equipment out of there and it's in you for life. And he's trying to play the part, but oh my god, this is just cringe stuff. And Vup comes up, and then Seven is there, and Picard pays Rios with some kind of thing. Is that gold press latinum? Is that some other kind of money? I don't know. I wish we'd seen it more. And then turns out Seven knows Bejazzled and the jig is up and everybody's caught off guard. Meanwhile, Raffi, she goes to some place that is either here or near here or by here. But Stardust, that's where they are, Stardust City, which is on Free Cloud. Stardust City Reproductive Health Services. And just coincidentally, this happens to be where her son is having a baby because reasons because plot and we just get this really contrived thing about the son hating her because she was absent on him it says it sucked being her son which again nobody has ever said that anything sucked in star trek before discovery it's more contemporary speak and anything that reminds me of discovery is bad they shouldn't be saying sucked that is never ever been language that was used in star trek before discovery now here it is in picard and this just felt the scene felt so so forced that he he hated he hates her because she was just absent in his life and she goes off about how there's a major conspiracy now the synth attack wasn't the synth and blah 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 you know i, I get it she's obsessed with this one thing that happened and it ruined her life but it just feels so forced and contrived it, it's just painful now here I will give them props. This woman looks very, very Vulcan. And I liked her hair, I liked her makeup, I liked everything about her. He introduces his mother, her full name is Raphael, and he said she was just leaving. That was another thing, how much he hates his mother and he just wants her gone. If I hadn't seen my parents in a very long time, even if I, even if I fucking hated them, I, I still would want to talk to them, I would want to know them, I would... I wouldn't just dismiss them like this. This was just so heartless. It was so forced and contrived. It was annoying. But his wife, Pell, I think her name is Pell. I, I forget. Anyway, I really liked her makeup. She looked very Vulcan. That was good. And so Picard's here trying to sell the whole thing. He's Rios is here. It turns out Seven and Bedazzle. God, that is a bad name. They know each other and the whole jig is up. Weapons get pulled boom boom and Agnes is up there freaking out about her part because I guess she has to work the transporter and the EMH shows up asking what is the nature of your psychological emergency so I guess the image just pops up whenever it detects something wrong with the crew and he asks what's wrong with her psychological emergency and she she just tells him to shut up and she is contacted by Rio she's I'm talking to you no I'm talking to the EMH she turns off the EMH and they have this whole back and forth and Seven grabs her and she tells everyone to drop their weapons and the jazzled tells her tells them drop the weapons and Elnor's all are we not pretending anymore and Picard's like no we're not pretending anymore Elnor he just seemed overly dim in this episode I get it he's only lived on this one planet he's only known the warrior nuns but he shouldn't be this dim he picks up the weapons and then suddenly he has them held at weapon point Maddox, he's seen better days, and Seven wants revenge, and she tells them about uh, what happened with Echip, and that the neutral zone collapsed, and earlier in the episode, when they were bringing Seven down here and using her as bait, they said that she's not one of the new ones. What does that mean? Does that mean that there were new Borg? Does that mean new people got assimilated while these Borg hunts were going on? What the hell has gone on with the Borg? What does it mean that she's not one of the new ones? That made so very little sense to me. There's something going on with the Borg. One of the new ones? Does that mean that there was a Borg invasion? Does that mean new people were assimilated? What is up with the Borg? None of this makes a whole lot of sense. Another thing that they did when they were coming down here, uh, Rios, part of his fake credentials was that uh, he helped Quark with a brain situation. I thought that Quark of Ferenginar is what they called him. I thought that was a nice call out to get them in here. 
But again, since there's a Quark bar, it, it just makes you think, is Quark here? Is he on Ferenginar? Is this his bar? Is this somebody else's bar? What's going on here? See, this whole thing with Bejazzle, Bedazzle here, Bejazzle, oh, that is just such a bad name. I feel like she should be a Ferengi. I feel like there, instead of Vup, you should have a Nausicaan here. I feel like there should be Nausicaans in this bar. I feel like there should be Ferengi up in this bar. I feel like there should be Ferengi everywhere. You should have filled this bar with Andorians, Tellarites, Klingons. There should be races here that we know, so there's interconnectivity. This is the same problem that you get in Star Wars Episode 7, 8, and 9. All the aliens you see are practically brand new aliens so that they can merchandise them, so that they're new and they don't have to pay licensing rights on them. It's 25% different. This bejazzled chick should be a damn Ferengi. And Vup, the Beta Nari, he should be a fucking Nausicaan. It's just... But anyway... They drop a reference of Quark and Breen, and it gets us to this point. And she wants revenge for Egypt because this woman hunted. This woman was part of something called the Conclave of Eight, and she tricked them, and she killed Egypt. Well, Seven killed Egypt, but she she tore him apart for pieces. And they name drop Voyager and the Delta Quadrant, and they talk about the Delta Quadrant several times. They name drop Voyager. And Picard tries to talk her down, telling her that revenge is not the way, that you won't get solace from it, be a good person, that this is not what you want, this will not solve things. Vup tries to pull a gun, and he gets shot by Rios. Rios goes over there and kicks him, and they decide. And Rios basically says, look, you found Vajazzled once, you can find her again. Let's just take Maddox and go. And Vajazzled's like, yes, take Maddox and go, and if you find me again, we'll... You'll expect me when you see me. And she holds her up. But Rio, and so they beam up. And uh, she runs up to Maddox because they had a thing apparently. And they take Maddox to the sick bay. And Rios leaves a little transport enhancer here, which I guess is the way back down there. So Rios actually left seven. They're out back there. So Rios, he was okay with Seven getting revenge. He had no problem with any of it. And he actually facilitated her getting back down there. Which is what this says to me. And before she leaves, she says that the Fenris Rangers should have already sent another ship to come get her. And her and Ricard have a moment. Uh, she gives him a little token in case he needs a mercenary. He thanks her. She asks if she, she says that... Vigilantes or mercenaries always need more weapons and ask she can take two phasers. He's like, oh, sure, take two phasers. See, again, here, this seems pretty dim for Picard. Picard should know exactly what she's going to go do. She says that another ship's coming, and she says that she's going to go meet up with them, but he, he should know that she's going right back down there to finish the job. But, ah. Uh, and before she goes, though, she has this really poignant moment with Picard, and this was fantastic. When she asks him, when he was separated from the Collective, did he feel like he regained his humanity? And he says, yes, yes I did. And she's like, completely? And he says, he whispers to her, he says, no, not completely. So even to this day, he's haunted by the Borg. And that is in there. He is haunted by the Borg. And, you know, I'm going to throw it up on screen right here, but... In the preview for next time, we do get a look at a Star Trek Picardified uh, Locutus, which is kind of interesting. Um, but after this very, very amazing moment where he has this heart to heart with her and tells her that he's still haunted by the Borg, no, he never completely regained his humanity. He beams her back down there, and she goes down. And Bedazzled is sitting there just like, Jesus Christ, I can't believe that just happened. And her security's sitting there. And Seven's just like, hi! Opens fire. Everybody goes and runs. They take off. And she's just here with her. And she's just like, come on, Seven. Don't do this. You know? And they have a talk. And she tries to talk her way out of this. And it's, it's just not happening. It's just a whole lot of nope. Nope, 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 you killed Egypt. There's no way 
that this bitch gets to kill Ichip and not die. You know, in a chat that I was in after the episode, people were talking about how they didn't like this because it makes Seven into a killer and it ruins her character and all this stuff. You know what? I'm willing to live with that. I am willing to live with it ruining her character because you know what? This woman killed Ichip. And just a whole lot of nope. She did not get away with that. Boom. Gone. No more. Bye. That is exactly what she gets. Thank you, Seven. This is one of the most badass things I've ever seen you do. If it ruins your character, then it ruins your character, and you have to live with that. But Ichip is avenged. Goddamn right he is. And then Seven goes all $23.99 medieval on their asses. Hell yeah, she does. Go get him, girl. Then back on the ship, Card's talking to Maddox, and he asks if Dodge had a sister, and he's like, yes, Soji. And he basically says that there was a conspiracy, that he knew that something was wrong, that the synths got hacked, and that he knew there was some conspiracy, and he had to figure it out, and that's why he sent in Dodge and Soji. He sent Dodge to Earth, and that he sent Soji to the artifact, and Picard's all talking to him, and he's like, not captured Borg Cube. He's like, yes, there's something going on. I had to figure it out. And he says the Dodge and Soji have an AI mother. So that mystery is solved. Whenever, you know, uh, Dodge contacted her mother, the mother was like, go see Picard. And she's like, oh, you, I didn't tell you about Picard. She's like, you must have. She's like, no, I didn't. Well, go see Picard. It's an AI that kicks in and it directs him on what to do. Just like when Soji tried to call her mother and make sure that Dodge was okay. Well, and then she says something about Dodge's puppy and it puts her to sleep. There's a protective AI that's there to set them on the right course if anything goes wrong. So the mother is an AI program that is used to direct them in uh, situations of need. And right here where Agnes is sitting there listening, I... I just when it showed her sitting there listening, I knew you couldn't trust her. I knew you couldn't trust her. I knew something was up with her. Picard, don't leave. Don't leave them alone. Jesus Christ, don't leave them alone. And Picard goes up to him, and Rios is like, you know, going to Romulan space, that's going to cost more money. And Picard just gives him a look. He's like, okay, Hefe. I like him calling him Hefe. And Picard, he apparently has currency. He's got gold press latinum. He's won some Dabo tables or something. Because he, he'll just pay for anything. And, okay, Hefe, we're going. He says, you want to talk to our stowaway, though, real quick? Picard goes and knocks at Rafi's door, and Rafi's just like, go away. So he knows that things didn't go so well with her son. Then Agnes is here talking to Bruce, and Bruce is like, you and me and Sung, we did it. And you were instrumental in it. And he asks, did you get to see, did you get to meet Dawes? She says, no, I only heard about her. And he's like, she's perfect. She's perfectly imperfect. So he, he made an android that's just perfect simulation of life. Perfectly imperfect is what he calls her. Or something to that effect. And uh, we get there. And she kills him. She does something here. Punches up something on the hollow. You know, again, this is a great set and everything. But I still feel like there should be some 2D interfaces there should be some tactile consoles there should be pads of some kind interface devices that everything is a fucking hologram jesus christ but she pumps them full of something and then the emh pops in and is all what is the nature of your traumatic what is the nature of your psychological emergency and he looks down what's the nature of the medical emergency he's like he's gonna die if you don't and then she turns him off you know, I feel like he should have instantly gone into save mode. He should have contacted the captain. Gerardi should not just be able to do something like this and go undetected. There should be alarms going off on the bridge. There should be all kinds of things happening that prevents something like this situation right here from happening. You shouldn't just be able to murder somebody this easily. And she deactivates the EMH, which since the EMH saw stuff, I guess she's going to have to go in and delete some of his memories, some of his subroutines, I don't know. She's going to have to cover her tracks somehow. And he, he just gets poisoned and he, he dies. And she's sad and she said, I wish I didn't know what I knew. I wish you could see what I saw. I wish they hadn't shown me what they showed me. 
So Commodore O showed her something, and she's being she's being manipulated. She's being coerced somehow. I guess they showed her that Soji and Dodge were the destroyer, whatever the hell that means. I swear to God, if this ends up being a story where the Romulans created the Borg, I am going to roll my eyes so goddamn hard. And obviously, you can see that she doesn't want to do this because they were in love, but apparently, Dodge is the destroyer, and she had to do it, and she had no choice. And something tells me that even though that we just saw Agnes kill the person she loves, somehow she's going to be redeemed, and somehow... They're going to forgive her, and somehow she's going to continue to be part of the characters in the story, even though that this is irredeemable, that she just murdered somebody. I get the feeling that somehow she is going to come back from this, and this won't be the end for Agnes. But here we are, and God, this episode, I gotta say, this episode fucked me up. You know, each of that just, rawr, that made me angry, and... Maddox, I mean, he's from one episode, but still, really? They're going to do him like that? This, all I can say is that the way they've set this up and you hear an episode, this better goddamn lead to something huge. If this has a shit payoff like the end of Discovery Season 1 or 2 did, I swear to God, this had better be going somewhere huge. And that is all I have to say on the subject. And that's the episode. And yeah, this is the, they just better have this going somewhere huge. And in this episode, in case anyone is unaware, they did recast both Ichib and Maddox. Ichib looked exactly like Ichib, and I think it's very hard to tell that that wasn't the original actor. His name is Manu, and then he's got a last name I won't even attempt to pronounce. But Manu, I could understand him not wanting to come back for this and do one scene where he gets murdered. And then the actor who plays Maddox, which his name escapes me at the moment, he has a job somewhere else. He's like at a school of some kind. He's a teacher right now, so he's probably unavailable for this. But Manu probably didn't want to do this. So that's why Maddox and Ichib were both recast. And that's the end of the episode, and that's the end of my review. Uh, you know, my... My... my closing line about this episode is this episode was not okay that is what i have to say about this episode this shit was not okay uh if you listen this long thank you hope you enjoyed this like subscribe be well